QuickBooks Online 2022 Jobs, Subcustomers, and Projects. Get ready because it's go time with QuickBooks Online 2022. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We set up with a 30 day free trial, holding down control, scrolling up just a bit to get to that 125%. We're currently in the home page, otherwise known as the Get Things Done page. And the business view as compared to the accounting view. If you wanted to change to the accounting view, it's something you can do by going to the cog up top down to the accounting view. We will be toggling back and forth between the two views, either by going here or jumping to the sample company file, which is in the accounting view, just so we can take a look at where the different items are located with the two views. Now we want to talk about jobs, subcustomers, and projects, a confusing area for multiple different reasons. One being that this is an area of specialization, meaning particular types of industries would need the job costing or to be tracking specific types of projects. Typically when you have a situation where you have longer term projects that you want to be tracking items, costs, and expenses related to. So therefore we're not going to get into it in a lot of detail here because it's a specialty type of area, but we want to touch on it. Two, it's also confusing because the terminologies can be similar or we might use different terms for the same thing. So for example, jobs and subcustomers have similarities to it. And three, we have similar type of functionality, but functionalities that are different within the software. In other words, in this software, you've got the subcustomers, which in essence act like jobs that were in the QuickBooks desktop. And then you've got the new item, which is in essence the projects. So the projects has some overlap in terms of what it can do, its functionality of what you might use them for as the sub customers or what used to be called uh, the jobs. So now the question is when you're in the QuickBooks Online system, if you're in a system where you have a job cost type of system or you want to track items for a specific job, then do you want to use the sub customers or do you want to use the projects? That's the first kind of question that you want to be thinking about. So if you're in a type of industry where you want to be tracking these longer term uh, type of projects or jobs and uh, related to particular customers, then do you want to do that with the projects? Do you want to do that with the sub customers? Oftentimes in the online system, you might be moving over to the projects because that's kind of the, the newest type of thing that has some different types of functionalities with it. The other confusing components you want to look at is that you could basically also use sub customers in alignment with the projects. That's why they could still be applicable and useful while you still have those two type of things uh, that could be involved in the same type of software. And also, if you're moving from another software like QuickBooks Desktop, it uses it doesn't have the projects features at this time. It has jobs. The jobs, if they were converting into the online version, would be basically the sub customers and not the projects. So if you were to be converting from the desktop version on into the online version, you need to be careful that if you're trying to use the projects system in the online version, then you need to be careful in, in knowing that you might not be able and most likely will not be able to just import all the jobs and convert them over to projects because those are two different things. Okay, that said, let's go into our Get Paid and Paid Center, basically the Customer Center and the Business View. I'm gonna go into the Customers up top, which is in the Get Paid area. If we were in the Accounting uh, View, it would be in the Sales area, basically the Customer Cycle, and we would be going into the Customers area here. All right, let's go back on, on over to the, the Business View. And then I'm going to close this back out. So first, let's think about the sub customers because these are these are basically uh, the similar or similar thing to the jobs. So if you worked with the desktop version, if you've worked with jobs, you're basically saying, "Hey, I've got a customer. I'm going to make a job that's sub a sub customer or subordinate to the customer, and I'm going to track costs that are related to that particular job." So you might have, for example, one customer, and you might be doing multiple different jobs for them that are taking longer term uh, a status of the job and doing like a job cost type of system and you would be tracking the information for the particular job under you know the sub the job being the sub of the customer so we could do that a couple different ways we could say okay let's go into for example 
setting up a sub customer for Jones Guitars. So what I'm gonna do to do that is I'm gonna go up top and I'm gonna say I wanna have a new customer. I'm just gonna add it as if it were a new customer, but I'm gonna click off this little checkbox saying it's a sub, uh, sub customer, which is kind of similar to a job if you worked with a desktop version. And then I'm gonna say sub customer of Jones, Jones Guitars. And there it is. And the only other information I'm going to put is going to be the number. I'm going to just call it the number is going to be 3005. So I'm going to say there's job number 3005. You might put more of a description on the job number other than the job number. But I'm just going to put 3005 is going to be the job. And it's going to go for Jones, Jones Guitars. It's going to be a sub customer of Jones Guitars. Why can't, why won't that pull up Jones Guitars? There it is. And then we have this item down here, which is to bill with the parent. So when I create basically the, the uh, payments from the parent could be applied then to, the, to this particular job. And when I create statements, I can then apply the, the statements will be on the, the job statements will be on the statements for the parent customer. Or I can say bill this, cus bill this customer, which is going to basically separate those items. And this distinction is one of the reasons that you might kind of use the jobs or the sub customers in alignment with the projects. Because when you set up a project, as we'll see when we get into the project side, it's possible for you to assign the project to the customer, or you can assign the project to a sub customer if you wanted to do that, and then possibly have the sub customer kind of separate with regards to the billing of this customer. And so that's one way you can use this in alignment, but I'm not gonna get into that in too much detail here. So we're gonna go ahead and save this. Let's just save this and see what it looks like. And so now if I was to see my customers, let's go back, I'm gonna hit the little icon or the little hamburger. There is our sub customer here. Let's go back to our customers just so we see what it looks like here. And there is our sub customer. I'm gonna create another tab up top, right clicking on the tab up top and duplicate that tab. And then if we wanted to basically invoice something to a particular job, we can then invoice it to, to the job as we create our, our forms. So I can say, okay, if I was gonna make an invoice now and invoice it, and I wanted to apply it to the job or sub customer, I'm gonna say 3005 and then pick it up. So notice it picks up the parent Jones guitars and then the number 3005. So I'm going to close that back out. Do you want to save without? Uh, yes. Let's go back on over and let's just do another one and say we were going to do one for Sam, the guitar man. So I'm just going to say if I wanted to create a sub customer, which is like a job, I just say new. I'm going to say this is for this is going to be for a sub customer of Sam the guitar man and i'm going to say the name is just going to be a number for us 4002 and then it will be a sub customer i'm going to bill it with the parent which is the default so i'm going to save that and so there we have then uh, the sub customer here as well jones and sam the guitar man and then obviously you could track information basically to the sub customer or in essence basically the job now projects, let's take a look at the projects and compare that to the projects. I'm gonna go to the tab to the right. Let's go to the tab to the right. And the projects are located in the uh, business overview. If you were in the accounting view, it would just be simply on the left-hand side projects. And so we have our projects here and then I'm going to close up the hamburger and it says run your projects with confidence make better decisions by knowing uh, how your jobs are doing profitability in one place organize your project finances with a clear view of profits keep track of your labor costs QuickBooks help you connect the dots between your payroll and projects so it has a little bit more functionality also note that this one is now th here I believe with uh, QuickBooks online plus it used to be something that was you had to basically level up for they had you know it was a added feature and, and so on so now you basically have access to it uh in with the quickbooks online plus i believe and so and and it's obviously the thing that they're trying to integrate uh, into play and, and work have been putting some work into so eliminate the guesswork and this payroll item is a, is one of the areas they've been putting some some improvements into as well eliminate the guesswork understand which projects make money and where you should focus your efforts 
and so we could we can you can look up again what you want to do when you're doing this on the online version is decide okay how am i going to use this am i going to use these sub customers or am i going to use the projects when you start your system out then you want to make sure that you're applying the proper system from the start because that's going to make it a lot it's it's one of those it's another one of those things where you want to basically uh, measure twice cut once as opposed to tinkering with it until you get it right because it's going to be difficult to change your system from using basically a a, a sub customer system to a to a job cost system you can also use class tracking and and uh, and location tracking in a similar kind of ways these functionalities have a lot of overlap within them so and that's it's great that you have all these tools but it also causes some confusion because you can do similar types of things with with these different tools which may or may not be beneficial depending on your specific needs so it really gets down to basically your specific needs and what you would like to do is pick the pick the thing that it's going to be assigning you best and your particular needs so that you don't have to switch it later on because converting from a whole different system of tracking your projects uh, will be you know more time consuming than just hopefully getting the right system down and then just tinkering within that system that you are using. So let's go ahead and just start a project just to see how it works. We'll put the project name, I'm just gonna call it project one, and then the customer. So you can see it still applies out to a customer. So let's put this one to uh, Anderson. Let's, well, let's, put it, let's put it also to Jones Guitars. Jones Guitars on the customer. And we're gonna say the start date, let's say at just basically at the end, at the beginning of the year, I'm not gonna put an end date. And then you have your statuses, which are not started. So if it's not started, you're just planning the project. It's in progress. That's typically where you need it to be if you're going to be assigning items to it. Completed would be it would be done and then canceled. You no longer have the project. If you were to make estimates or something like that to the project, you know, then you can use the estimates, which wouldn't actually report or record a transaction because the estimate does not have any financial transaction. And you might, you know, use the estimates for a project and then cancel the project or something like that. But in progress, then you've got the notes for the project and then I can save the project. And basically the project is just going to be in essence a shell here that that's going to allow us to then post things to a particular project. You've got the overview, the transactions, the time, the project reports, the income and expense information on down below for, and for Jones Guitars and in progress here. If I was going to go to the first tab and I hit the hamburger and I was to add say an invoice again so i'm going to invoice and now i want to look at a particular project i can hit the drop down and i've got jones guitars now i've got the project and i've got the sub -custer. these are two different things they're not they're not the same thing so if i named the project the same number like 3005 then that would be kind of confusing because these are these are two uh, different items so you got to be aware of that i'm going to close this back out so there's our invoicing. Also note that if you go into your customer area on the get paid and pay area into the customer area and go down, say for Jones, notice the, the sub customer shows up in this area, but you don't see the project in this area. To get to the project, you gotta go to the project center and then you can track the information uh, in the project center. So if you wanted to go back, let's go back to all the projects so now we're in all projects and let's basically uh, take take a look at a new project again so let's say I was to say new project and this is gonna be project 2 and then I'll put this one the other one for Sam the guitar man start date and then in progress so we'll keep that one I'll save that once again it goes into the project so now we're into the activity of the prog project we can add the information here instead of going to the tab to the right to add the invoice, for example. I can add the invoice, the receive payment, the expense, the estimate right here, which will make it a little bit easier or less less likely for me to, to basically assign it to the wrong area, not the right project, for example, because if I add an invoice here, it will put the project up top automatically instead of me having to locate it when I when I create the invoice. 
closing this back out and then of course we can go back to the all projects and then we've got our two projects on down below that we can we can work with in the overview here so i won't go into the it's a specialty area to to look at the to track the projects we won't go into it in a lot of detail here we, we might take a look at it in a future course or future presentation so we can drill down on it in a lot more detail but just note just realize that when you're setting up something that's going to have projects or something that has class tracking or location tracking or sub uh, customers or jobs that you have all these different tools that have that are all great they have their unique benefits and their and their and their things that they cannot do and of course your goal then is to say okay which of these really neat tools can i use what combination of the tools do i want to use and I want to get that done from the start. And if you're converting from a system like QuickBooks Desktop on over, then the question is, you know, what's the best system to convert into? And how easy is the conversion process going to be? How am I going to be able to convert to use and get in alignment with the data I currently have into the system I want to be using from here going forward?